With a relentless focus on excellence in healthcare, Pullman Regional Hospital presents The Health Podcast. Well, it's not quite as hard as it used to be, but some people are still uncomfortable talking about urinary tract infections. Today, we'll try to answer most of the questions you might feel awkward about discussing, even with your doctor. My guest today is Dr. Brenna Harris, a board-certified family medicine physician at Pullman Regional Hospital Family Medicine Residency Center. Dr. Harris, thank you so much for being on the podcast today to answer some of our questions. Thank you so much for having me. Let's dive right in. What is a urinary tract infection, or UTI, and what causes it? All right. Well, by definition, there are two types of urinary tract infections. A lower urinary tract infection, or cystitis, is a bacterial infection of the bladder muscle, while an upper urinary tract infection is an infection of the kidney, or also called pyelonephritis. An infection occurs when bacteria ascend via the urethra into the bladder and sometimes can continue to climb from the bladder via the ureters up to the kidneys. There is also a form of pyelonephritis that can occur when someone is sick with bacteria in the bloodstream, which then seeds in the kidneys, but of course, that's not as common. A urinary tract infection is caused by bacteria, most often Escherichia coli or E. coli. There are other types of bacteria that can cause UTIs. For example, Pseudomonas is most common in patients with healthcare exposures or instrumentation such as catheter use. Okay, fair enough. And what do the UTI symptoms usually include? Symptoms and signs of cystitis can include dysuria, which is pain with urination, urinary frequency or urgency, as well as suprapubic pain, which is pain in the lower abdomen, and sometimes hematuria or blood in the urine. Symptoms that suggest the infection has extended beyond the bladder or may now have developed pyelonephritis include fever, nausea or vomiting, and flank pain. Are some people more prone to UTIs than others, Dr. Harris? Yeah, females are more prone to developing urinary tract infections due to their anatomy, with the urethra being close to the vagina and rectum that naturally have bacteria. Some individuals that are immunocompromised may also be at increased risk as the body has a harder time fighting off bacteria that is present. There are also individuals with neurologic or urinary disorders that have to use instrumentation or even those who undergo a procedure in which a catheter has to be used, and that can also introduce bacteria into the bladder. Okay. Pop quiz time. True or false, cranberry juice can help treat UTIs? Yeah, good question. In short, no. Drinking cranberry juice will not treat a urinary tract infection. In fact, there has been some research to show that people with reoccurrent urinary tract infections taking cranberry supplements or drinking juice will hinder the bacteria from attaching to the tissue, thus decreasing the risk of developing a UTI, but not curing it. I see. Okay. And, you know, some people really get socked with it. They get eight or nine, sometimes even more than 10 UTIs a year. Yeah. Unfortunately, some people are at risk for for getting some, and sometimes it's completely not their fault. Yeah. Will a UTI go away on its own? There can be bacteria that make it into the bladder and your body is able to fight it off. However, if symptoms have developed, an infection has been established And that does require an evaluation from a medical professional and likely antibiotic treatment. Okay. This is a biggie. Are UTIs contagious or able to be passed along to your partner? No worries. Urinary tract infections are not contagious and will not spread to your partner. Well, that is very good to know. Is there anything that can be done at home to help alleviate symptoms? Yeah, well, typically taking antibiotics will help alleviate symptoms even within the first day. There are some things you can try if you are unsure if a UTI is starting to develop or even to reduce the risk of getting a UTI. First, I would encourage you to drink lots of water to help flush out bacteria. You should also avoid holding your urine and urinate after intercourse to prevent bacteria from staying in your bladder. An over-the-counter treatment called phenazopyridine can help with the discomfort and pain from an infection, especially for the first one to two days while letting the antibiotics do their jobs, as this treatment will not cure the infection. Is there a common name for that medication? A common brand name is Azo. Okay. Do you have anything else that can help for UTIs? I would also recommend avoiding bladder irritating foods such as caffeine, alcohol, and spicy foods when you have a UTI as it can make symptoms worse. And lastly, make sure to clean from front to back and avoid scented products that can cause irritation or increase risk of developing a UTI. Interesting. Scented products. Okay. Is there still a stigma over UTIs? To us, no. 
even though while your genital urinary symptoms can be uncomfortable to discuss for some, it is important to seek medical attention if you are experiencing symptoms concerning for a UTI. Please remember that providers, we are here to try and help. So no matter the issue you may be struggling with, please come in. And what can happen if a UTI goes left untreated? The infection can definitely worsen, climbing from the bladder up to the kidneys and causing a more severe pyelonephritis. And some individuals with pyelonephritis do need to be hospitalized. Okay, so pay attention and seek help. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Dr. Harris? Just please never be afraid to seek help. If you are experiencing symptoms that you're concerned with, we are always here to try and help. Fantastic. Well, Dr. Harris, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Just a total pleasure to have you on and to feel more comfortable about talking about UTIs. Thank you for having me. And you can learn more about this subject, providers and services, at Pullman Regional Hospital online at pullmanregional.org slash residency center to learn more. I'm your host, Deborah Howell. This has been the Health Podcast from Pullman Regional. Thanks for listening and have yourself a terrific day.